Look at me! I'm the Wooloo Water Boy, Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Wow. One week from today, we will have our first, our second, and our third round pick already done. And we will be drafting right now. Well, no, actually, we won't be. They'll be the fourth round first. And we don't have a pick in the fourth round. But we'll be coming up and getting on the clock soon with our fifth round pick. Um, but we will definitely be shaping the team um, right now in a week. And I can't wait because, you know, it's it's Saturday. Um, and, and literally Wednesday, we'll be headed on the road to Detroit. And I hope you guys follow along. Uh, we will be bringing you coverage like nobody else. Um, this has been the off season from hell. This has been crazy. And I will say for the years that I have been doing YouTube, that this has got to be the worst that it's ever been. I've never remember a time that Cowboy fans have been this pissed off for this long even with the draft just days away. And this is of the Cowboys' own making. Um, they like to be on front street. They like to have everything out in the public. They like to negotiate contracts and everything else. And the reality is, is this is what the Cowboys want as far as being on everybody's tongue. I don't know if they realized it was going to be as negative as it is. The reality is, is I, I actually feel somewhat sympathetic to Stephen Jones, although most of these issues are of their making because they have screwed up so badly with contracts that I think they're getting gun shy on how to do these things, that they literally are over their heads. What's funny to me is right now, the Cowboys, the gauntlet has been dropped. They are playing a game of chicken between Dak and the Joneses. And I want to kind of go through a little bit of what Stephen Jones said yesterday because there were some other things that were actually good that are missed in his conversation. The, the thing I will say about Stephen Jones is he doesn't bullshit you the same way Jerry Jones does. He pretty much will tell you the truth. You may not like it, but, you know, when he has always said, we believe in our own guys, which is why you will believe that eventually they'll get these deals done. And in the end, what always happens is the Cowboys play the tough guy, the tough negotiator. You know, we're not going to reset the market with Zeke Elliott. Yeah. When you overpay a quarterback, you can't put people around them if you don't want to. And so now you hear Stephen Jones saying, well, you know, we got to have money to pay these guys. Well, the sooner you get it done, the more money you'll have for others. And the whole concept is skewed where you're not really seeing the big picture. You can buy a car, for example, same car, $20,000, depending on what your credit is. And it might cost you $450 a month if you got good credit. If you got bad credit, that same car that costs twenty thousand dollars might cost you six hundred fifty because you're not getting premium financing. Same car, it just costs you more money. And see, here's where we look at guys and we say, "Well, Dak, he's got to prove that he's worth more money." You know, when Justin Herbert didn't have to prove it. Now, Trevor Lawrence is about to get paid, and 
you know, he's not having to prove it. They're not saying we're going to put you on a franchise tag and wait another year. Nobody else has to prove. A guy who is the runner-up in MVP two of the last three years has to prove when the team is not doing things to try to maximize what they have. When you take this $55 million cap hit and say, we can't pay free agents, and Jalen Hurts has a contract that's $11 million more a year, that's $95 million more than Dak Prescott's, and his cap hit is like $13 million. Do Cowboys have bad credit? They must, because it seems like they're paying a whole lot more money. Now, now think about this for a second. Deshaun Watson's was a $230 million fully guaranteed contract. His cap hit is $63 million, and that's a hard number for the next three years. There's nothing he can do about it except cut him and take a big dead hit. You understand why that one's so big. Dak Prescott's deal was not $230 million fully guaranteed. It was only $160. That's $75 million less. $75 million less. Joe Burrow is $275 million. He doesn't hit $55 million a year till 2029. So the problem here is these contracts and not knowing how to get them done to be able to maximize what you're doing. Let's listen to Stephen Jones here. Uh, leadership to the defense. And then, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, adding, you know, pieces here and there, uh, here getting and our there. running back. And uh, yesterday we're, you know, still not through. We'll still do some work. But, uh, you know, you just have to be patient sometimes when you're not going to go out and, you know, and be overly aggressive with the dollars. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, certainly we've got a lot of dollars earmarked for the three guys that I mentioned the other day. Then let's do How much it. does uh, does bringing Mike Zimmer in change your approach to what a Cowboys defensive player looks like? Because it feels like every level kind of changes in some way. It does. I think anytime you bring in a new coordinator, uh, you're going to have changes. And uh, certainly Mike brings an edge. Uh, you know, uh, coaches in a different way than Dan. Dan was very successful in the way he did it. I think Mike Zimmer's been very successful in this league with the way he does it. And certainly philosophically, uh, you know, I think we'll be, you know, we'll have more of a, a, a three linebacker system rather than a two linebacker and a three safety system, uh, which is uh, really what Dan uh, preferred. And, you know, I think uh, the other thing is uh, we'll probably uh, look for look to be bigger and stronger in the middle. I think obviously, uh, you know, our Achilles heel, uh, I think the last two or three years has been stopping the run. And uh, I think Michael Bree. Now, I will say. You hit the nail on the head on that one, bro. That stopping the run has definitely been one of the Cowboys' Achilles' heel. And the change in the defensive philosophy will be, we will be a bigger defensive line. Mozzie Smith <clears throat> is basically going to be the load in the middle. They're looking for him to be about 350 pounds and just clog the middle. You've got one job, tie up the middle of the field. Keep the guards from going up the field to hit the linebackers, make the running back have to go in a different direction than up the middle, keep the quarterback from stepping up into the pocket. That's all we need from you, bro. You can be a big load. Just don't move. And that is what we need. Go on, Steven. Bring an edge and uh, a philosophy that should uh, help us improve in that area. Does that, does that also include then needing to invest more um, capital in that specific area? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously we're, uh, I think what Zim, invest capital. philosophy Zim brings to the table, I think fits what Mozzie did, which obviously we have a lot of uh, resources tied up in Mozzie between what you pay a first round pick and using the first round pick. I think he fits more into what uh, Zim does than maybe, uh, you know, what Dan uh, was trying to get out of him. So uh, I think that'll be a big plus for us. And then, 
you know, as we move forward, we'll see uh, what the draft brings in terms of what falls to us and, uh, you know, how we allocate our resources there. But uh, we really like the defensive side of the football. I think Zim, uh, you know, has come in, taken a look at our personnel. Uh, we, uh, you know, really like our personnel on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, obviously, we lost a couple of starting offensive linemen that we've got to look at. And uh, obviously, we lost Tony Pollard. And uh, we're still looking, you know, at that situation in terms of upgrading that as we move forward. There's always talk about best player available in every single round. I was really curious if you got into a scenario where the best player available on your board in the first round did. even was a quarterback, would you pull the trigger on that or would you consider that even though that's not among the needs you just listed? Yeah, you know, I just think all those are things that uh, you look at as, as you move forward. It's hard to uh, get out front right now and, and, and see what might be there, but uh uh, certainly, you know, we'll go through all the different uh, possibilities that may happen as we move into next week. Obviously, we've been hard at work getting our board put up and uh, really getting everything sorted out the right way. Uh, next week's a big week for us strategically in terms of, you know, the what ifs and looking at a situation like you just mentioned. If, a, you know, if a position uh, falls to us that we feel like, which we do, by the way, uh, you know, feel great at with Dak and, then, of course, our acquisition of Trey last year. Uh, Trey's done nothing but uh, uh, excite us even more uh, as he's worked here uh, all of last season and then uh, in the off season in terms of his work ethic and, uh, you know, his cool. skill levels uh, we're very pleased with. You, you kind of were just diving into that work ethic and skill levels. Can you tell us anything else about the progress y'all have seen from Trey Lance, because obviously fans don't get to see a lot of the stuff that you're talking about. Yeah, he just, uh, you know, he exhibits everything that you would think, a, uh, you know, a top five pick would exhibit or a top 10 pick would exhibit, which is what he was in the draft. And that's why we gave up, uh, you know, a, a significant draft pick to get him. And, uh, you know, what you look for in these quarterbacks is certainly, uh, you know, the work ethics a, a must uh, to be successful in this league. It's a, uh, it's a very demanding position, and uh, certainly Dak is, uh, uh, you know, I think one of the hardest workers that's ever come through our building, and uh, certainly why he's had the success that he's had. Uh, Trey exhibits uh, similar uh, type work ethics, and then obviously uh, Trey's a, uh, a really good athlete in terms of being able to uh, move around, uh, his athletic ability, and then, uh, you know, finally the most important thing is his arm, and uh, he's got a very live arm, a very strong arm, and uh, he continues to, you know, improve, uh, you know, with his footwork and his accuracy, and uh, which uh, is what you expect uh, from a young guy uh, uh, coming into the league. So, uh, you know, we're certainly uh, very excited about him. And then, you know, all Cooper Rush did for us uh, when he got an opportunity. All right, so let's let's stop right there. So, I know Cowboy fans are like, just get rid of Dak because then we'll have money to get other people and we're good to go. And they feel good about Trey Lance. Now, Trey Lance, there's not a lot of paperwork on. But keep in mind, he couldn't beat out Sam Darnold. That a team that spent three number ones plus for him decided we can give him away for a fourth rounder. 2022, he played, started two games. They were one and one. He threw for 194 yards. Zero TDs, one interception. His rating, a 55 and a 36 QBR. The totality of his career is 2-2 two and two, with a 54.9% completion percentage, three interceptions, and five TDs. And this was with a really good offensive line. Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey, and Debo Samuels on the roster. I'm not going to sit here and say, Trey Lance is not going to be a good NFL quarterback. But understand, like Dak Prescott, 
like Cooper Rush, they're only signed through this season. You're going to have to pay somebody to stay. Trey Lance could play in preseason and look decent. Dak Prescott could get hurt and he could play, you know, a couple of games and somebody would look and say, we're going to sign him as a free agent. Or the Cowboys will have to drop a dime on paying him to keep him. Now, I'm going to say, listening to Dak Prescott's interview, that he is calling the Cowboys bluff. Most Cowboy fans and the Cowboys organization feel like, well, Dak Prescott, this is the only thing. This has been his dream. That this is the only thing he cares about. But when you listen to him yesterday with the cancer event that he, he was doing, he literally put the thing in the Jones's lap. And basically, if in, at least in my opinion, I could be wrong. If you read between the lines, to me, what he's saying is, is, yeah, I want to be here. I don't have to be the highest paid if you're going to do something to help it, necessarily. But here's what I kind of said a few months ago when the season ended, and I said to Game Time Brian and stuff, and if you want to look it up, look it up. But I said, if I'm Dak Prescott, I go to the Joneses and say, look, I've, had, I've got money. I've got money from all my endorsements and being the quarterback of the Cowboys and the money that you've paid me and will pay me this year. It's not about money now. It's now about a legacy. I've been man of the year. I've been, you know, offensive rookie of the year. You know, I've got close to having all the Cowboys records. The only thing I need to seal me in Cowboys and mortality is winning a Super Bowl. So are you or are you not in to win a Super Bowl? If you're in to win a Super Bowl, then I'll work with you to get it done. I'll work with you so we can get a ring and take less money because I'll make more money having the ring. If you're not about doing that, then make me the highest paid. If I'm going to be taking the lumps, if I'm going to be taking all the hate and animosity and everything else and being trashed, at least... Pay the hell out of me for doing so. Let's listen to Dak Prescott in his own words in this thing. The entirety is about four and a half minutes. All season's been different than every other time you've been here. Just the, the lack of free agent activity and, and more of your own guys leaving. It, it, are you a little puzzled by that based on what you'd seen in previous years? Uh, I don't want to say I'm puzzled. Uh, obviously... I understand. I'm, just, I'm focused on the guys that we have. I know we got a lot of great guys, a lot of a lot of good that that's returning in that that locker room. And I say good, but but great and young guys that are good that are making that next step. So um, obviously, have faith in those guys. Done always done well in the draft and, and bringing some guys in. So um, hopefully that'll make a big impact. And I think right now for me, it's about just focusing on the locker room and pouring into those guys. And and I don't control that that side and making those moves. So um, not going to put too much thought and 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 angst into it i guess and and what we're doing and how we're getting that done rather than just uh, how can invest in the guys and making sure that they're getting better and holding myself accountable to do the same would you like your deal done by the start of the season um honestly uh i'm focused on the moment on the now uh if the talks begin and and real talks get to happen uh sure we we can talk about getting that done Uh, but in this case right now honestly i'm worried about just Getting better, being better tomorrow than I am at this moment. So, uh, leaving leaving that up to, to my agent and, and and Jerry at this point. And when those talks begin, um, I'll be more involved, obviously. So, so no talks. Have, are you surprised that no talks have happened? No, I mean I've been in conversation. I've talked to Jerry, and so I understand where we are, obviously. And Jerry's mentioned the same. So there's not any gray area in that okay. sense. So, uh, yeah. You and uh, he talked to you about the cap and all the situations and why they're not. We had a great conversation. Okay. We had a great conversation that put us aligned and 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 where we are and moving forward and okay. or where we are in this moment, right. I should say. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll address moving forward as as, as that comes about. CD so so situation. Are you working with CD? CD. CD. <laughs> <laughs> One at a time. Remember, that's your, that's your contract. But with CD and and uh, for business reasons, not being out there. Do you two still work off on the side? How do you? 
conduct that when he's at this stage of negotiations? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll get some work in. Uh, I've, I've been in communications with CD. Uh, that, that's that's there. Um, so, yeah, we'll get work in, and wh whether it's him getting into the, getting into the facility, maybe maybe a deal gets done, and if it doesn't, um, I guarantee that we still find a lot of time to make sure that we're putting in the work that uh, we feel comfortable. The contract for a franchise quarterback for any team, it's a big financial piece around which a club can build. How much the value is is obviously relevant to that. For third contracts, different people have different philosophies. Do you want to be the highest paid quarterback in the league? Do you view it differently? What's your philosophy toward it? Yeah, no, I'm not trying to be the highest paid. Uh, Necessarily, um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll w w wait till negotiations begin, and, and um, obviously want to put this team in the best situation. So, have your feelings changed at all about your desire to be wanting to be in Dallas past 2025? No, I'm I'm focused on, on on here right now, where I am. That's always how I've been. Uh, you can anytime you've asked me, it's always been about right now, um, getting better tomorrow. And I've been in this situation before, so. It's okay. I'm fine in, 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 in any situation at that point, betting on myself or playing this year out. And, uh, yeah. So your talks, what, so your talks with Jerry. The day, I get a good one. Okay, I'm <laughs> trying. So your talks with Jerry, you say that that ease my fears that my future is here. Your That's fears? What, your fears. I don't have any fears. So you, you believe you'll be here forever playing based on your t conversations with Jerry? Uh, I'm not going to say I fear. Okay. Being here or not, I don't. I don't fear either situation. Key, guys. To be candid with you, I love this game and and love to play and love to better myself as a player and my teammates around me. Um, right now, it's with the Dallas Cowboys. It's where I want to be and that's where I am and that's the focus. And after the season, we'll see where we're at and if the future holds that. Then if not, we'll go from there. One, did, did one, you, one did quick question: Can you address the losses at all or or anything regarding that? Just cause we haven't had a chance to talk to you since all that came out. Yeah, I mean. Um, how should I address that? Uh, I know the truth. I'm, I'm confident in, in what we filed, very confident in what we filed. Um, I know some things have changed in their sense and, and where they filed, but that doesn't have any um, weighing on what, what we're doing and, and how we're going about uh, our lawsuit. And you're confident Thank that's you, not going to affect no. your negotiations? You, no. has, has nothing to do with it. Okay. There you go. That's Dak Prescott in his words. Do you have any fear of not being here. I don't have any fear of anything. So either pay me or don't pay me. I'm going to be fine one way or the other. That's the way I take it. And putting the ball back in the lap of the Joneses to figure out what they want. At this point, you know, at this point, you have to look at this and say, you know, whether it's Dak Prescott or not, whether it's Dak Prescott or not, the Cowboys will not win a Super Bowl with the way they are currently going about business. Flat out. You can let Dak Prescott go, but if your whole thing is we're only building through the draft, you know, we're going to get a young quarterback and you're not going to surround him with talent, you're still not winning the Super Bowl. And that's where we have to get past as fans is recognizing that. Yes, we do some incredible things. I will take what the Cowboys do in the draft and undrafted rookie free agents over anybody else in the league. Anybody else. But when it comes to contracts and uh, free agency, they suck. They stink. They are the worst. When it comes to how they treat their players, they suck. They stink at it. I don't know how you go through, you trash and belittle the players, make them look like the bad guy, and then you want to be partners together. And people are you know, looking to say, well, he should take a team-friendly deal. So let, let me see if I get this straight. You want me to get trashed, belittled, told I'm worthless, and then you want me to look out for the team that didn't look out for me. Do I have it right? Because that's what it sounds like people want. You can't have it both ways. And the sooner they get these things done, 
the sooner they can be doing something else. Now, the reality is, at this point, with all the big-name free agents that are gone and out there, there's no urgency to get Dak Prescott done. There's none. You can get CD done and you'll save a little bit more money. Come June 1st, you got $9 million that's coming because of Michael Gallup. And you'll get some money from CD. That's enough money right there to run everything for this year. You have $100 million in cap space at the moment for next year. And, you know, you don't have to do anything. But you are driving a wedge between your players and the organization. Now, I expect Dak Prescott to come out here and be an assassin. He knows, doesn't matter. Either I'm going to get paid by the Cowboys or I get paid for somebody else. And I wouldn't bet against Dak Prescott. But then again, that's just me. And what do I know? I'm a guy here who doesn't have a journalism degree, who isn't tied into the Cowboys organization, and is lucky that he's not broadcasting from his mama's basement. Oh, and clarity. One thing up here. People have been asking because they think this is an Eagles mug. It's not. It's toilet tissue. Ass wipe. And this, shout out to Queen Bella, is not actual raid. Although, I wouldn't mind having some raid for those Eagle fans. This is actually an incredible piece that she made me. It's a coffee bug. So, when you trash me and make assumptions about me, at least get the shit straight. All right, good people. I've got some work to do here. And, uh, of course, we will be bringing you all the updates and everything else that we have. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate y'all. Peace. Vice Bay.